back here later on in the programme to put some more lots under the hammer. Now, Blackburn's a vibrant town, so what better way to capture its history than through a series of photos? I was given the privilege to access thousands of press photos, a wonderful archive, taken over 60 years, events in and around Blackburn, and I think you're going to be in for a real treat. Take a look at this. These are just a snapshot of the huge catalogue of press photographs taken by Wally Talbot and his son Howard. They worked as freelance photographers covering events in Blackburn and the surrounding areas for over 50 years. And between them, Wally and Howard took over 25,000 photos in their impressive career. There are some real gems including Mick Jagger celebrating his 20th birthday in 1964 and the Queen's royal visit in 1977. The collection of photographic negatives has been donated to the town by the Talbot family, and I've come to the University Centre at Blackburn College, where they're being catalogued and archived by the Photography Department, and it's led by Richard Peregrine. Hi, Richard. Hello, Paul. Good, Good to, to meet you. And you, and you. These are just fantastic, aren't they? Yeah. What went through your mind when you first set eyes on the collection? Well, it's amazing. Every town has a photographer like Wally Talbot, yeah. but what we couldn't realise is how many photographs there were and how the actual range that they, they spanned. That's the most diverse range of photographs. It's yeah. got everything you can possibly imagine. We've yeah. got pictures of the Queen, we've got uh, celebrities, we've, got, um, yeah. we've just got photographs of things like Autumn's arrived and yeah. pictures of people cleaning up leaves in the park. They worked incredibly hard. On Saturdays they're known to have shot weddings in the morning and then been at Blackburn Rovers in the afternoon. They worked for lots of different papers. They were literally working on commission daily and there was like massive competition to actually get the shot. From football matches to weddings, from celebrity appearances to royal visits, Wally and Howard covered it all. It all started in 1928 when the local newspaper took Wally Talbot on at the age of 14 to work in the print room. And it wasn't long before he became their first staff photographer. During the Second World War, he joined the RAF and often flew over enemy lines, taking photos to document the raids. On his return to Blackburn, he carried on with his eventful career. His son Howard joined him when he was just a teenager, and as the only freelance photographers in the area, they covered events all over East Lancashire for the next 50 years. Why have you brought me to this one? Well. I drove past uh, this place, this is in the Ribble Valley, it's a place okay. called uh, Mitten. It's, it's very, very unchanged now. Oh, it's really? Com yeah, completely. Um, and it's just a quintessential British landscape. It was taken in 1957. Oh, look, he is the vicar. I was going to say there's the a vicar. chap smoking his pipe, smoking but it's his, his dog pipe. collar. Yeah, yeah, and we've got the, uh, the gentleman farmer here and, and yeah. the, the, the farm labourer in the field. And just the whole feeling of it, the way Wally's composed it. It's very pastoral. You can access exactly the same view today, can you? and it's virtually exactly the same. But yeah, I think this one's very special, and it came out of the first box. And when I saw it, it was just absolutely magical. And I've, I've, I don't mind saying I've got it on my wall at home. Oh, it's just beautiful. It's, it's, it's lovely to see quality work. And, you know, when you work that hard for such a long career, that's why you've got 25,000 good negatives. The majority of the photos were taken before the advent of digital technology, when cameras used glass plates to capture a permanent image. Photography student Peter Graham has been tasked with scanning and archiving each individual negative. Hello, Peter. Hi, Bob. Hiya. Oh, sorry, don't worry, take, take the glove off. <laughs> what are you doing? Um, what we're, just, we're just taking some of, at the moment, glass plate negatives. Yeah. OK, we take the glass neg into the scanner, make yeah. sure it's straight, the scanner's nice and clean, and then that that we've just scanned becomes the image that we see on screen. I don't know who that is. I like the car, though. Yeah, it's beautiful. That's uh, Jerry Marsden from the pop group Jerry and the Pacemakers. Oh, yes. Uh, and when yeah. we talk about the stories, uh, you can see the thumbs down here. Yeah, what's uh, happened there? He'd been in court for speeding. Oh, had he? In that car? Yeah. <laughs> What, what's your favourite? Have you got a favourite? Without a doubt, it's uh, James Pitts. And who's he? Uh, he was a Blackburn lad, uh, and he was 
served in the Boer War at Ladysmith. And yeah, as you can see from the image, what makes it special? Oh, the Victoria Cross. The Victoria Cross. He came out, uh, find it hard to find work. So he went back into the army for the First World War. After the First World War, so it was virtually broke. Uh, so a Scottish jeweller approached him and offered him 10 years salary for his Victoria Cross. Straight away, without hesitation, he just said to him, lad, I'd rather beg and I will never sell it. And then a slight story, the town then felt guilty, the fact that they had a Victoria Cross winner and he wasn't working. Yeah. So they made the decision to offer him the job within the council, which he stayed in for 36 years oh, until that's, he retired. That's good. Great. We well, see that's what it's all about, isn't it? That's that is Blackburn's social history. You know, it's a very is. important archive. Absolutely. Very important shot. It is. Wally and Howard worked together covering local stories right up until Wally's death in 1994. Howard retired soon after, but has fond memories of working with his father. Howard, I've been looking at your work and your father's work, and I think you both have a brilliant eye. Your genius is at getting <laughs> the right composition, and this one has struck a chord with me. What I want to know is, were all of these people here, or do you have to arrange everybody? Well, you try and get... You try and compose it a little bit. You've just got to make sure that they keep them there and get them in line. The actual faces, they do it themselves. And this was a local event? This was for the press? This was a dog show, obviously? What we do is you go round and then you try and get a picture and you sell it to the press. Right, I see. Right? So they weren't You're commissioning you to do no, anything? No, no, no. So you could no. sell it to any newspaper? Yes, yes. You've got to try and tell a story without a caption. If you didn't get the best shot, you didn't get paid? No. You certainly both had an empathy with the people, with your subjects, that's for sure. And if you can work them, you got your picture. And then when you looked at it, you think, oh, that's a good picture. And it gives you a little bit of yeah. pleasure. I mean, there's some real gems in the collection, oh, isn't there? I mean, it, there's a lot, but I'm, I'm glad that they're being brought out. I thought there's a bit of prestige there and heritage, mm, mm. which I'd rather people get a bit of pleasure out of it. It's absolutely marvellous that after Wally Talbot passed away, his son Howard deposited all of their press and commercial negatives so the collection could quite rightly be lovingly preserved. Mm -hmm.